What's going on guys? National Signing Day is over. Oregon finishes right around the 20th mark, depending on where you look. Rivals had us at 21. That's the class. I, that's the place I usually stick with. So 21. Um, I'm pleased with it. I'm very happy with this class. The thing about this class that I think a lot of people are kind of like, I don't know, did we do well? Did we not do well? It's a very diverse class. It's not heavy on offense. It's not heavy on defense. It, it doesn't look like one position dominates, so we did get a lot of offensive linemen. Um, this coming after the year, we didn't get any offensive linemen. We dominated defensive linemen that year. This year, we kind of went the opposite, and I mean, that's good. But there weren't like just, oh, we got running backs, or oh, we got great quarterbacks, or we got great, great this or great that. We spread it out. We got great linebackers. We got great corners, safeties. A running back, wide receivers, athletes that can play multiple positions. We got a defensive end. Um, we got a defensive tackle, I believe. You know, we, we stayed local. We put a fence around Oregon. It's great to see that that's where Helfrich went. And, I mean, he was feeding off a lot of what Chip Kelly did. But it's great that he kept this class together. We only lost one player after Kelly left, and that was Dontre Wilson. Great player, granted. But we had a running back. We have a running back in Thomas Tyner. He is the future of Oregon. He he is the next LaMichael James, Ahmad Rashad type of player at Oregon. Then we get this kid from Texas A&M, or was supposedly to commit to Texas A&M. Firmly was a verbal down at USC. Uh, decommitted there. Was supposed to go to A&M. Came to us. I'm just going to call him Pre. Just because I don't know how to pronounce his last name. So, Doug fans, we have another pre in town. He's not a part of track town. He's part of football town, as Helfrich called it today. Um, so, I think he's going to be a big part. And what got me really excited about him was Helfrich said he's going to be, he's going to fill Deion Jordan's spot. And if he can be the player that Deion Jordan was, who I'm, I'm chomping at the bit to see this guy play. Because I think he's agile. I think he's quick. I think he's explosive. And from what Mark says, he can hit the quarterback. So that's those are good traits to have. Um, I think one player a lot of people are underestimating or overlooking in this class is Joe Walker. The linebacker commit. He's a Juco transfer. He came in early. He's already on, the, on campus. He's going to fill a big void with Kiko and Clay both leaving at the same time. There's a huge gap at linebacker. That is a glaring hole on our defense. This guy will come in, will fill the void for the Robinson Twins to slowly be integrated. The Robinson Twins will play. They, they probably won't be redshirted. But now they don't have the pressure of starting in Division One football on defense. That linebacker, a pretty key position. You know what I'm saying? He will fill the void. Another big player that I think a lot of people are overlooking, and this whole position gets overlooked, um, Duck fans aren't overlooking it anymore after our struggles at this. The kicker, Matt Wogan, number two in the nation. His long is 40 yards. He can also punt and kick off. And for, I've watched a few high school football games, and I mean, for them to attempt a 40-yarder, they must have true faith in his leg. And I watched him kick. He can kick longer than 40 yards. There was a little bit of extra yardage left after that kick. He, he's good. I'm telling you, Duck fans. We won't have to worry anymore. Because the last two games we've lost have come down to kicks. So, no more of that can happen. So, Matt Wogan, big pickup. Bye-bye, Maldonado. Bye-bye. Somebody actually had the nerve to say him and Maldonado are going to battle. <laughs> Funny. There will be no battle. If Wogan does not start... At kicker next year, there is a problem. There is a problem. Anyway, um, this class did what it needed to do. It got depth on the offensive line, which I think is going to be a little bit riddled next year. It got a good defensive player. It, it kept the void filled at linebacker. Gives us another year, kind of just plug and chug. Gives us another year to develop the players behind Kiko and Clay. Give us another year to recruit a linebacker. That uh, pre from Texas gives us another year to recruit a de the defensive line. 
build up, you know. And the thing about Oregon, a lot of people think, oh, you're going to have a young defense. You're, you're only going to have sophomores or freshmen uh, coming in and playing at offensive line or defensive line. Yeah, but the thing about that is Oregon plays these guys a lot. We play 20 to 25 guys on defense in a ball game because we're always rotating. And that's hugely to our advantage when we have maybe not the great greatest classes in school history or we lose guys to drafts that maybe we didn't expect to lose. And that didn't really happen this year, but when we have a lot of seniors on the line or have juniors that leave, that's one big thing to our advantage is those sophomores, those redshirt freshmen, they're ready to go. They're ready to play, and they're ready to step up and take the role and be leaders on defense or offensive line, wherever they need to be put. And we got guys on the offensive line. I'm excited to see these guys play. Um, Walker will probably be the first guy off the bench at linebacker. Then we'll probably have the twins in there a little bit. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Wide receiver, we got Devon Allen, uh, Darnell uh, Carrington, Dar Darren Carrington. Um, Devon is a uh, number 10 ranked wide receiver. He's also going to play for track town. So more track players on the football team. It's great. Um, I expect a big year from Braylon Addison, BJ Kelly, Dwayne Stanford. All these guys, the, Braylon Addison, Dwayne Stanford, were both true freshmen last year. BJ Kelly was redshirted year before. So I expect a big year from those guys in the receiving core. Those uh, two wide receivers we've got today will probably be redshirted. Barring an injury, um, we'll, we'll see what happens. But I'm excited for this next year. The spring game is on the 27th of April, if I'm not mistaken. So a little bit of ways away. But I'm going to have other things going on. Got orientation on Monday. Super excited about that. So it's going to be a busy month. But I'll keep you guys updated as soon as I hear anything we gonna have spring ball pretty soon oh man spring ball is right around the corner and then you got the spring game and then then fall practices start up in about what what when would they start like june or july oh man cannot wait bring on 2013 2014 season bring on Nichols state august 31st that's it for me tonight Hope y'all are happy with your classes. Hope y'all had a good fun day. Um, talk to y'all later. Big go Ducks.